Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today it's time for July's mid-month mini mission inspiration and as always I'm going to do another art tag for the challenge for this month. So let me turn over to my overhead camera, I'll show you the prompt for July and I'll explain what I'm going to do. Okay, so the prompt for July's mid-month mini mission inspiration is run around in circles. Now just lately I've been sort of obsessed with circles anyway, particularly when I've been doing art journal pages and um, because they're such a versatile shape to use in a, in a project um, and you can do lots with circles. So I've taken my tag out, I've already stuck the prompt to the back so I'm not going to forget later on what the inspiration was. So I'm going to use to start off with a really really old technique, a tried and tested technique with distress inks so, and I'm literally just going to grab, um, let's see, so let's go with candied apple. We'll have a little bit of orange and some yellow to start off with. Um, and I'm going to do a smush effect. So I'm just going to add a little bit of those colours. down onto my workspace. So these are water-based colours and I've been careful not to kind of contaminate and get any on each of the ink pads. Get some water, uh, a little bit here. Just activate the ink. As you can see it's starting to bobble up a little bit and then just with my finger. I'm going to just zhuzh through it. Now we've activated it and created all that nice kind of colour, I'm going to drop my watercolour cardstock into the background, pick it up and see what we've got. And I'm just going to randomly go around picking up all the colour, trying to cover the entire of the tag pretty much with what I've got. The edges seem to be missing a bit. Bit of a messy process. Right, let's get that dried off. Okay so we've got the base background done which is cool. So I'm going to come back in with some of that yellow. Same again. I, think I need to replenish my water. <laughs> and then I'm going to go back in and add some of the yellow all over, just lifting up and down, creating some layers. Okay and I'm going to carry on just building up the layers with each individual colour. I'm not going to use the orange anymore but I'm going to put some of the darker red back in. and it is just really random. Okay so now that we've got the yellows and the oranges in there let's bring in some of that blue. So broken china. So this is going to add in a bit of a different element to it. So now we'll get reactions, yellows, greens, maybe some purples, but mostly greens look. <laughs> A 
love it. Okay, so let's see. We've had some of that blue there. Let's bring in another a brighter blue this time. This is Mermaid Lagoon. Deeper blue. <laughs> okay. It's darker shades. That's it. Now we're talking some real high contrast colour. And I absolutely love the randomness of it. Just look at that. Beautiful. I know I'm going to get muck on the back, but that's fine. Right, so what I want to do next is just create a kind of little darker border. So I'm just bringing out the brush corder, right? I can't find my vintage photo anywhere. It's been borrowed and not brought back. Not mentioning any names. kind of just gets rid of any lighter areas towards the outside. There we go. It kind of creates a darker frame. So let's get rid of that ink on the mat. There we go. I have no coffee to throw that into today so we're safe. There we go, quick clean up. Right, I'll get all my um, distress inks put away and I'll be back in a moment or two. Okay, so I've got everything dried off and I've made sure that it's pretty much free from kind of dust and that kind of stuff. I've got some indigo blue flitter glue. Now this is the same glue that you would use if you were um, using um, gilding flake. So what I'm going to do is just put some of the glue just on a piece of scrap card. Make sure I clean the nozzle because otherwise I'll forget and it'll set and it'll be very difficult. Right so what I've done is I've got a piece of card and I've punched out a two and a half inch circle, a two inch circle, and a one and three eighths. Is it one and three eighths? Yes, one and three eighths. Circle from this cardstock. But I've had to extend the card because I had to get it too close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a stencil with this cardstock. I've got the glue and I've got a bit of sponge. I'm just going to work the glue into the sponge. And then I'm going to go around the circle with the glue. Okay, so that's the first one. And then I'm going to try and do a second larger one here. And I'm going kind of lightly over there because I don't particularly, oh, I've just moved. That's not what I wanted. There we go. Yeah, I'll keep lifting it up. And that's not the effect that I was going for, but finger down just to hold on to it. Right, and I'm creating a couple of sticky kind of like circle patches. What's that, what that's for is for some embossing powder or ultra thick embossing powder. So this is ultra thick embossing enamel and I'm going to dump that onto the card. I'm just going to press it down a little bit. Now with any luck stuck in those places. So 
So where it's just gone a little bit awry, I'm just going to use a brush. And just remove that. where possible. Okay, so because this is ultra thick, it is quite chunky, which is why you need something a bit stronger than just bog standard kind of embossing ink. Ian's going to go mad if he knows that I've got glitter in the house. Ha ha ha! He's got a horror of glitter. But hey ho. Okay, so the first go of many. Let's give that a bit of a heat up. I'll tell you what I am going to try. Let's just turn that back over. Drop that over the top. Now then, let's just try to... What did I do with the pot? It's there. Let me throw a bit more on. Probably going to regret this. That's better, that's got really kind of thick there now. Let me just move that out of the way. All this glitter. Okay, I just need to have a quick tidy up. Haha, <laughs> and now we're getting somewhere. Now we are getting somewhere. Right, I'll be back in two moments. Okay, so that's cooled down a bit now, so I want to give that a second going over. But this time, rather than dropping it on top, let's just bring some more of that glue out and load some of that glue up. So more glue. Messy, but fun. Ha <laughs> Okay, the fun continues. I've now got some gold. So let's bring that circle in. This time I'm going to do a circle in gold, but I'm just going to kind of add the glue. See? Just there. See, so have all this stuff in your stash and it never gets used because it's like, you know, well, when do I ever need to use embossing powder? <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay that circle over the top again and I'm going to heat it and as it becomes molten I'm going to dump some more on top there. 
that's going to need to sit for a few seconds just to uh, cool down, stop moving. using the smaller circle this time Ooh. got more glue with that more embossing powder there no nope, actually this is it's called embossing enamel so it's ultra thick like the UT but coloured So on this one, we're going to do a smaller circle, I think. So we need more glue. And I'm going to go over the top of the existing now. So this is one of those kind of projects that you could just play. Just play to your heart's content. And experiment with all kinds of different colours. Right, I'm going to throw in some blue. Just because. So this... Just give it a shake up actually. So this has got some silver in it. like so okay always make sure to put the lid back on okay like we did before ooh, that's all splattering and moving now so I'm going to heat it up What a glorious, glorious mess. Which is strange because that's exactly what they're called. Glorious. Indigo blue, if you're interested. <laughs> Look at those big, chunky circles. Right. I think that's going to be enough for the embossing powder for now. Quick tidy up and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got circles, we've got shine. So what I want to do now is I want to create um, some impressions um, in there, particularly in that gold, because you can see it's kind of like a, a nice flat surface. So what I'm going to do again, I'm going to heat it up again. Right, so I should have explained. I'm going to heat it up again so the surface becomes molten. Now you can do this as many times as you want with embossing powder. Every time you apply heat it's going to start going liquefied again. I have a stamp. So this again it's just an indigo blue stamp. It's called Cinnamon Swirls and it's, um, it's, is it this one that I've got? That one I think that I've got. Which is about the same size to fit in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat that up till it's molten and then I'm going to push the stamp to create a pattern into the embossing powder. Now the trick is, is to get it just before it starts to go molten again and you can tell just by looking at it. And it's almost like one of those wax seals. So I'm going to just leave the stamp sitting in it for a second or two and then I'm going to peel it out. Doesn't do the stamp any harm at all. 
but look. Oh, good fun. Now, obviously, if it's plain embossing powder, it should work fine. I've never tried it with glitter, so let's just try it. You can start to see it move on the surface. I've got glue on my finger, so it's making everything tacky. So, like I said, leave it for a second or two. And then lift. So you're getting the impression in there. So it does work better when it's just plain, which is fine. So I'm going to try it on the blue. This time, just with that smaller one. There is a little bit of glitter that's come up, but that could easily just come up with a little bit of white spirit. Um, isopropyl alcohol or surgical spirits if you're in the UK. So as soon as you see it moving, drop it in. Leave it for a second or two. Um, methylated spirit as well will clear it if you're in the UK. That's the purple stuff. There we go. One clean stamp. One little piece of glitter, there we go, I've got that. <laughs> okay, out it comes. And you can see the pattern embossed into it, which is cool. So now what we can do is just to kind of finish off is use those same stamps. Now I've got a little bit of just black ink. And all I have to do is just to kind of give it a random stamp just to kind of tie that pattern in with everything else. Again, just a quick clean and stamp away. I'll give that a proper clean later. And just be careful with drying off. There we go. I think actually I might just have a go at stamping into that just to say that I've done all, th all four of them. And then, like I said, just give it a second or two. And then peel it off. There we go. We've got a nice impression in there as well. So I'll have a quick tidy up and then I'll be back. Okay, so all dry, all cooled down. I love that. I love the fact that you've actually got the shape um, in that background also reflected in your, your circular enamel too. So I think I'm happy with that tag for now. So I've got my um, prompt sheet on the back so I can refer back to it. So in it goes into the tag journal. So all done. So. I hope you've enjoyed watching me playing with that glorious um, embossing glaze from Indigo Blue today. 
If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. And don't forget, there's that new Facebook group as well, um, if you want to pop across and join that and share what you're inspired to create from my videos. So that's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. And don't forget you can access your exclusive angel only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.